Now that you've learned how to get started with the Havoc SDK, let's take a closer look at what exactly a physics engine is and what it can provide to your games. This video will lay down important groundwork for us to dig into Havoc details in later videos. So what is a physics engine? A physics engine provides services to your game relating to dynamics and collisions in a physical world. Perhaps the most important of these services is rigid body dynamics. Rigid body is simply a name for objects that have an infinitely hard surface. That's opposed to things with a soft surface, such as a sponge or a beach ball. Soft body dynamics is a fairly different problem, which requires different sets of technology. Havoc Cloth is one of those technologies that deals with soft body dynamics. Asynchronous queries is another service that is often provided. This is simply a way for the game to gather data about the physical world outside of the dynamic step. This is things like ray casts. So if I fire a ray through the world, what do I hit? This is very useful for things like line of sight checks. So can my enemy see the player, for instance? Linear casting. Linear casting is similar to ray casting, but it's a shape through the world. So this is very useful for things like um, camera collision detection. So can I move my camera from this position to this position without hitting a wall? There's get closest points. What is the closest point in the physical world to my, to my query shape? This is good for placing things in, in the world. And get penetrations. Does this object currently penetrate anything? Another service physics engines often provide are trigger volumes. Trigger volumes may use the above services. But what they do is they call back into user code when objects are entered or exited. This is often very useful for things like playing sound effects or triggering game events. There are several main components to a physics engine which allows it to provide these services. For instance, collision detection. This is your shape versus shape or your ray versus shape algorithms. These provide contact points between shapes or contact points between a ray and a shape. Another component is the constraint solver. In a 3D world, there are typically six degrees of freedom, three linear degrees of freedom in the x, y, and z axes, and three angular degrees of freedom in the x, y, and z axes. Constraints simply limit or remove degrees of freedom. An example of this is a contact constraint. When two bodies come in contact with one another, they can no longer move in the direction of each other. That's a constraint. Other types of constraint are user constraints. So that's things like hinges or ball and socket joints. The other thing that the constraint solver needs to understand is the global and user impulses that are in the system. That's things like gravity or user-defined impulses on the objects. All of these impulses and constraints are known by the constraint solver, and it iterates over them and tries to resolve them. Havoc uses an iterative constraint solver. That means that with each iteration, the constraints get closer and closer to being resolved. This is actually a global setting within Havoc, where you can tune how many iterations Havoc will use in order to solve constraints. This is a trade-off between performance and accuracy. The last main component of a physics engine is integration. Integration simply takes the output from the constraint solver and uses that to move the bodies forward in time. So let's look at a basic simulation step. In Havoc, constraint solving actually happens first, based on the output from the previous frame. So contacts are resolved, and any other constraints the user may have added. Then the bodies are integrated forward. Lastly, contact points are generated for the following frame. When you're trying to represent your entire game in the physical world, the number of objects can quickly become very large. This becomes a performance problem. We don't want to have to test each object against every single other object to see if it collides with it. At least, we don't want to use the expensive algorithms to do this. So instead, we have different collision detection phases. The first phase of collision detection is often called the broad phase. In this phase, we are simply trying to identify pairs of objects which we can then pass on to the more detailed algorithms. Havoc uses a three-axis sweep. The three-axis sweep algorithm is fairly simple. In this algorithm, each object is represented as an AABB. That's an axis-aligned bounding box. In each of the three axes, the ABB is represented as a min and max pair. We then iterate over an axis and look for overlaps in the min and max pairs. When we find one, we check the objects in the other two axes to see if they overlap there as well. If, an, if two objects overlap in all three axes, we know that their AABBs overlap and we can pass them on to the narrow phase. 
If the two objects pass the narrow phase are sufficiently primitive, then we simply pass them along to the algorithms which handle those two primitive shapes, for instance, box versus triangle. However, oftentimes, the objects passed from the broad phase are a little bit more complicated than that. Consider the logs falling on the landscape in the picture on the right. The landscape is simply one large object in the world, but it has many triangles. Instead of colliding each log with all the triangles in the landscape, we would like to identify candidate triangles for testing. This is where the mid-phase comes in. Havoc provides an optimized mid-phase, which essentially uses a bounding volume tree to identify child triangles to collide with the logs. Now that we understand the collision detection phase a little bit better, let's look at a problem that is very common to physics engines. If you are paying close attention to the simulation step slide, you may have foreseen this problem. The picture on the left is before integration occurs. The picture in the middle is after integration. If the simulation step is sufficiently large, or the objects are moving fast enough, the collision detection phase will never pick up the collision between the sphere and the red box. Havoc solves this through a, what it calls continuous physics. In continuous physics, objects are swept through the world. They generate what we call TOIs, or time of impact events. Time of impact events are sorted from first to last, the simulation is backtracked, the collision is registered, and then it's, the simulation moves forward from there. The result looks something like this. In continuous simulation, the narrow phase collision detection step can generate TOIs. TOIs are then passed along to a final sort of mini step, which will iterate until all TOIs are solved. As you can imagine, TOIs can be really expensive. It's for this reason that Havoc allows for many parameters to be tweaked in order to determine how often TOIs occur and for which objects. This allows for you, the user, to balance performance versus accuracy. There's lots more that could be said about physics engines. And there's lots more places that you can go for information. A couple that I'd recommend is the Havoc documentation, as well as Chris Hecker's papers on rigid body dynamics and the CS Berkeley papers on rigid body dynamics.